Hello and welcome to Robotics with K5 using Sphero. For today, you're going to be learning how to incorporate robotics in elementary curriculum through app, free apps. And the free apps we're going to be using today are Sphero Education as well as Sphero. You'll also be learning how to use these tools to reinforce learning as well as learning how to set up and use Sphero. Why robotics? Robotics can create engagement with the curriculum. It creates problem solving. With Sphero, it's a great thing because you can work Sphero through coding. So that coding process can help build up problem solving. It incorporates STEAM as well as prepares students for possible jobs. It also incorporates the four C's which are communication, creativity, critical thinking, and collaboration, as well as increasing digital literacy. Using Sphero. Sphero is a, a Sphero, is a, is a sphere-shaped robot. Um, it is moved, it can be moved manually, or you can work it by coding it to move. And with this product, they also do create multiple different kind of robotic models. But the one we're going to be focused on today is the Sphero SPRK Plus. Here are just some ideas of incorporating Sphero with curriculum. With the curriculum, these aren't the, just the ideas you can use. It's not just limited to this list. There are there's a plethora of things you can do with. Sphero and the curriculum. These are just some of the things that I've done within my own personal classroom. So for math, you can use it for shapes, measurement, and data, area, and perimeter. For social studies, you can do geography and history. With today's tutorial, we're going to be um, using my geography lesson and how I use geography and Sphero using cardinal directions. So that's the one we're going to be focusing on today. Um, and you can also use it with history, like reenacting different parts in history, like the Civil War or the Revolutionary War. For science, you can use it with matter, with solids, liquids, and gases, looking at, the mole looking at what the molecules look like. Um, that was really fun and a, and a great way just, to, again, to have students be locked in and engaged with the curriculum. You can also use it for force and motion in the solar system. With language arts, you got to get a little creative with it. Um, you can do story reenactment, so each Sphero can be a character in the story, and they can come in and come out. And what's great about Sphero is that you can make it talk. So your students can, you know, speak, or your or the Sphero can speak. Um, with vocabulary hunts and sight words, um, I've had, like, my words laid out on the floor, and I'll call out a word, and the student will move the Sphero to that word. So that, you know, helps with spelling practice and sight word practice and just another way to engage them. Um, some other things you can use with Sphero, and these aren't necessarily strictly curriculum based, but you can work them into the curriculum. Um, we have mazes, art, and you can do different challenges with them. Okay, so getting started. What you need in order to work Sphero, you're going to need the Sphero Education app, and of course, you're going to need Sphero. And in this picture right here, the bigger one is the Sphero SPRK Plus, and that small one is the Sphero Mini. So that is another robotic model that is used. Sphero is very accessible. Um, you can use it with iOS, Android, Kindle, or Chrome. Um, controlling Sphero, there are three ways to code Sphero to control it. Um, the first two ones are one of the one of, two of the three ways that you can use Sphero with coding, and that's the block method and text method. The text method is kind of on the more advanced side, so if you're new to it and um, your kiddos aren't used to coding, I would stick to the blocking method. It's pretty simple. And then you can um, also code by drawing, and I'll show you that a little later on. And the last one is drive mode. You don't have to 
code in order for Sphero to work. So if you're not comfortable with coding yet, you can still be able to incorporate Sphero by just using the drive mode. And I'll show you that as well. So now I'm going to show you how Sphero, is, how Sphero can be used, um, the packaging, how it looks, and just the basics of working with Sphero. Hello, so today I'm going to be showing you what Sphero looks like and how to access the app and get it connected so you can start using it with your class. Um, <clears throat> the prototype I have is Sphero SPRK+. Um, like I said earlier in my slides, you do have different robotic models, but this is the one we're going to focus on today and for our activities. Here they just have some different activities you can do with your kids. You have a maze, which is a great way to get your kids acclimated with Sphero and controlling it and working it. Solar system is great, um, especially in third grade when they learn about the solar system and planets. You could do painting, so this is great for any art teachers out there who want to incorporate technology in their lessons and still have art at the same time. You have, they can, it can go in water, chariot, you can do chariot races, or you can have fun with it and doing a dance party because it does light up and you can actually code it to strobe lights and spin around. Here's just the breakdown of the different parts within Sphero that make it work, that makes it work. And then on here is just um, an example of the type of coding that they have. There's three different ways to code Sphero. Um, this is one way and this is the block way. And I'll talk about the other two when we um, move on to the app. So here's Sphero, this is what it looks like, or this is what the box looks like. It does come with a protractor, so it's easy to, you know, if you're gonna code using angles, you can use this to really help you out. If you don't know what Sphero looks like, this is what it looks like. It's literally a sphere, hence the name Sphero. It's really sturdy as well. So here's what Sphero looks like. It comes with its own charging station. <clears throat> so when you want to charge it, it'll sit on top just like this and charge. You charge it using a USB. The USB just gets plugged in. Right here. And then you can get a docking station to where it will plug in. Or you can get um, plug it in using your computer or getting a wall plug to plug it in that way. So this is what Sphero looks like and this is the whole setup. Now for the app. You can access, you can access um, Sphero using your phone or an iPad. You can even um, access it on the computer. You just can't work the Sphero with the computer. So I'm going to show you. what it looks like. So there's two different Sphero apps. You have Sphero, which is a, just a fun way to get your students um, playing with Sphero, their hands on it, working with it, getting used to it. And you have Sphero Education. So I'm going to show you Sphero first. Sphero detected. Initializing connection. So as you can see, my Sphero just lit up. That's just letting me know that my Sphero has been connected with this one. Um, also, if you have a whole class set or like 12 or so, all you should do is hold, your, hold the iPad or phone over the Sphero and it will connect to any one and then that will be the one that you use. So the one that connects to your device is the one that you are able to control and use. So this is Sphero. This is just a more fun game-like version of it so the kids can use it to get um, used to playing with Sphero and using it. So they would just hit play. And then I'll bring them to this screen. Um, they have different missions to do. So as the students reach and do each mission, the mission number will change. Um, here's where you can change the speed of your Sphero. Here is um, how you would aim your Sphero. 
Um, <clears throat> as you can see, my sphero is moving around. If you see this blue little dot, that is the aim. You always want that aim to be towards you, as you can tell that they're telling you in the app as well. And students can also change the color of their Sphero as well. So here's this app. I don't want to spend too much time on it. But this app is just a great way to get your students used to it and playing around with it, um, just to get a feel of what Sphero is, is like. So I'm going to go out of there. And you'll see in a second my Sphero will shut off. So when you go out the app, the Sphero will turn off, which, which is great because it helps save the charge. So once you log out of whether it's a Sphero app or a Sphero education app, your Sphero will turn off. So I'm going to click on the Sphero education app. So here is the Sphero app, and there's lots of different um, things you can do. <clears throat> Here's just a news feed, so like I think people post things to Twitter or at, or at um, Sphero Education. It will pop up here. Here's also a great way to find ideas as well of how to use Sphero and, or how, and how others are using Sphero. Um, if you want to look up activities for Sphero on the app, um, if you look at the bottom, you'll see a little button right here that says activities. Click on activities. These are ones that I've done. And so once you are doing one, it will just show up here. So it'll tell you like ones are in progress, ones that are completed. If you click Sphero at the top, these are different activities that Sphero has created that you can go through and look. So yes, I, I noticed that it says draw blocks and then text. These are the three different ways that you can code Sphero. You don't necessarily have to code Sphero to use it. You can use it in drive mode and that's what I would recommend most, um, especially if you're new to it and or you're not used to the coding part, but you still want to incorporate it in your classroom. The drive mode is um, a really good way to go. Um, the drawing code the coding for drawing is a lot simpler and easier. So if you do want to start off with coding, I would start there. That's kind of like the beginning stages. And then you have blocks, which is your intermediate stage, and then your text, which is your advanced stage. So these are just different, the different ways to code. So you can draw, you can do it in blocks, or you can do it by text. Here are just some other activities that Sparrow has created that you can use. You can also go to community, and these are ones that other people have done and then put on Sphero. So you can look through here for different ideas. We've got some really great ones. And the great thing about Sphero, again, you can use it academically, you can use it for a STEM club, you can use it as a fun Friday thing to incorporate for your incorporate technology within your classroom and getting students used to it, but it's so it's a really awesome tool to use with curriculum based activities. And then here you have assignments. So if you wanted to have a student do some of these activities, you can assign them to your student. And the great part is, is if you use Google Classroom, you can connect your Google Classroom, your roster in Google Classroom to Sphero, which is less work. So that's great. Um, <clears throat> as I said, there is a drive mode. You don't have to code in order for Sphero to work. You can use the drive mode and you just hit this one right here where it says drive. And then depending on your Sphero type, like I said, they have different robotic models and these are all the models that they have. I'm working with the Sphero SPRK plus. So I'd click that. And sometimes you have to hold it, and sometimes it does take a while. <laughs> 
And as you can see, sometimes it doesn't connect all the way. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll log out of it. And get on it again. So as you saw earlier, it wasn't connecting. So I just shut, logged out. <clears throat> Gonna hit the app again, and you'll and it'll pop up showing that it's connecting. If it doesn't do that, sometimes it does take a while. Um, I've, sometimes I've just gone to the screen and held it up here, and it'll connect. But it will connect. But sometimes it does take a while. So we're gonna go to drive mode. So like I stated earlier, you don't necessarily have to code in order for Sphero to work. You can use it in drive mode, and this is just drive mode. And here's where you would control it. Here's your speed. And the aim is right here. Remember that blue button should always be facing towards you. And once again, you can change its color, or you can have no color. And in just a few moments, I'll show you how it works and moves. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the two ways that you can control Sphero. You can control Sphero in drive mode, as well as um, the programming, which is the coding. Um, if you're very new with it and you're not comfortable yet with doing the coding portion and teaching your students how to code, using the drive mode is a great way. Um, your students can still get their hands on it and still be able to do most of the activities. Actually, all the activities that with that you can do with the coding so it's no different it's just instead of you being able to just watch it you have to control it versus it controlling itself based off of the coding that you've done but I would definitely suggest the drive mode if you're still if you're still getting used to the coding process and um, it's still perfectly fine so I'm going to show you the drive mode first so in order to do drive mode you would just click the drive and I'll get a little closer so you would click drive you can once again change the color and change the speed remember you want the aim to always be towards you so I'm gonna have the speed really low because it gets easier to control now once your students can get the hang of it they can up the speed but I would start low because Sphero can get a little out of control at the um, at the faster speeds. So this is how you control it. You just move it around. As you can see, my Sphero is moving. Right now I have it on the charging deck and it's still moving. So you can move Sphero around using this. So see I'm moving this around and then my Sphero is moving at the same time. Show it again, Sphero moving around. Moving at the same time. Okay, then I would want to log out of that or exit out of that, and then you can do programming, which is your, which are your codes to make Sphero work. So there are three different ways to code Sphero. You have the draw method, block method, and text method. Your draw method is your beginning, beginner coding phases. Your block method is your immediate, intermediate, and your text is the advanced version. Earlier I had stated that there were different <clears throat> robotic types, and here they are right here. You always want to make sure the one that you are using is the one that is highlighted, or in blue. So I'm using Sparrow, so that's why mine is blue. I'm going to show you the draw draw coding first and you can title it so I'm going to title it draw create and then this screen will pop up um, I'm going to just draw a square and later on I'll show you um, the sphero making the square so 
just gonna draw a quick square. And the direction that you draw it is the direction your sphere will go. So if you're drawing down first, your sphere is gonna go down, then right, then up, then left. So keep that in mind when you're drawing it. So if you want your sphere to go up first, then you need to draw up first. So the direction in which you draw is the direction in which the sphere will go. So again, keep that in mind. If you want it to go a direction first, that needs to be the direction your first line goes in. Then my square is not turning out even. Also, the size of your sphere will also be how much surface space that the sphere takes as it's drawing it. So what I mean by that, if I'm going to draw a square this big, make sure you have enough surface space for the sphere to move that wide. So if you don't want it to go that big, then I would draw it smaller. That way you can still see it happening and it's not coming towards you or hitting things. So again, if you're going to draw something, make sure it has the space to draw that. Also, um, mess up. So I'll show you what it, the sphero looks like when it draws this square in a second. <clears throat> and then if I wanted to see how it went now, I can just hit the start button. Now I want to point out something. Whether you're draw, whether you're in the draw method to code sphere or you're in the block method, you can still be in drive method. So you can still hit the drive and, and aim it and bring it towards you. So let's say your sphere is not close to you, you can bring it back to you and then aim it and then press start and then it will go. You can also aim it through here as well. So let me get out of here and show you the block. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how you um, can code Sphero using the blocks. So I'm gonna go to one that I've already done. View program. So this is one that I've already done and I've played around with. Um, it does have a lot of cool different coding aspects you can add here for your blocking. You have movement, and then you have, you have movement, you have sound, light and sound. Sphero does talk. You can make it talk. I actually have that coded here. You can do different controls that you wanted to do. Operations. Sensors, events, variables, and functions. I think from operations on down, that's when it starts to get tricky, especially for... Um, the younger age groups. Not saying that it's not possible, but it does get to be um, a little more trickier. So if you're just starting the coding process and using the blocks, I would definitely um, stick with your movement, lights and sounds, and um, your controls with like the loops and loop forever and delay so I would these these three are the ones I would start with with um, the block coding not saying that you can't do the other ones but the other ones do get um, a little more in depth and a little more difficult um, just because you are in block mode doesn't mean you can't drive your Sphero so you can drive it and um, bring it close to you so let's say you didn't like how it was how your coding was you can take your sphere and drive it back to you just by moving this. So you just take your sphere and drive it back to you. And um, set the aim how you want to set the aim. So let's say you realize, oh, my aim wasn't facing me, so it's not going the direction I wanted to go. So you um, aim it towards you and then bring it back to you and then you can um, revamp your coding and then start over again. So let's say I wanted to add something else to the program that I already have. Um, let's say I wanted it to loop. So I would just go ahead and click on, hold it and then drag it over. So it's like a hold and drag. Let's say, mm, I'm not quite sure if I really want to do this um, loop. So I just hold it, on to, hold it on again and you'll see this red bar come up, which is just the trash. And then it goes away automatically. Um, let's say I did 
I had it speaking here, but I don't want it to speak here. I can hold it and also move it. So it's not, they're not stuck to where you, they are. You can change the order of it if you want to. You can remove it if you want to. You can add to it if you want to. So let's say I did this and I realized, mm, I think I want to add a little bit more. You can go back and add to it. So this is the um, coding using the block method. I did want to show you something really quickly. Um, you can convert your block coding into a JavaScript, and all you have to do is hit these three dots at the end of the screen, top of the screen, and hit JavaScript code, and that code actually comes up. So you can copy the code, you can print it. Um, you can easily, so let's say you wanted the printed version of this, you can go on the computer and still be able to access this stuff. Now the server won't move, but you can still be able to access um, this and be able to print it out. So this is the JavaScript code of the blocking code that I just did. So I'll show it to you one more time. So let's say you created a um, you created your program and you wanted to get the script for it. You'd hit the three dots at the side, and then you would go to JavaScript code, and then once again, the code pops up. So if you want to exit out a program, you would just hit the arrow, exit, and then it brings you back to um, the different programs that you have already done. Okay, so now I've shown you the basics and now we're going to move on and I'm going to show you how to incorporate Sphero with, um, with some curriculum-based learning. I do want to point out one more thing before I end the tutorial on how to use Sphero. Um, right here is your charging station. So right now my Sphero is charging. It's on the deck right now. So right now my Sphero is charging. And um, if you look right here, it's letting you know that it's charging. Now let's say I were to take it off the charger. When you take it off the charger, this might take a little bit, but when you take it off the charger, there it goes. You can see how much charge you have left. So it's, it, lets you, it, it lets you know, you know how much charge you have left and if you need to charge it. When you need to charge it, it will start, as you can see, mine's not charged enough, so it is dropping. So now it's yellow, so it's letting me know, hey, you should charge it pretty soon. Um, when it is um, on the verge of dying, um, the light, a red light will flash and beep um, through the color changing. So right now mine's purple, but it will also um, flash a red light. And that just lets you know um, that you need to um, charge it right away. So I just wanted to show you that really quickly. So when you do see that red flashing light, um, it's letting you know that you need to charge it. And if you're seeing that red flashing light and you're not quite sure what that is, just look right here and it will let you know um, your Sphero is about to die. <laughs> so um, yeah, so this is, once again, the Sphero education app. Um, you have your programs, you have your programs, activities, your drive mode. Um, <clears throat> excuse me remember in your activities you can see the ones that you've already done you can see the ones that Sphero has created and then you can see the ones that the community of Sphero has made so other teachers have made and put it here so here is Sphero education app and I cannot wait to show you how to incorporate Sphero in education and because mine is doing it right now I'm going to show you but here's what it looks like here's that red light that is flashing, letting me know that it's time to charge it. Okay. So now I'm gonna show you how to um, take a curriculum and um, take what's in your curriculum and then incorporate with technology. With, with the Sphero, I'm going to be um, using geography, as I stated earlier, um, with using geography with the cardinal directions. So the assignment. Students were paired up 
and each student had to play the GPS, <clears throat> in which the student had to create directions using cardinal planes. Students had created directions to go from what had to create directions that went from start from a starting point to an end point. And then they had to use at least five directional plans or steps. And for example, if I had a student do something, maybe a student would say, go north, east, go north again, go west, and then go south, and then you're at your destination. Um, you can make this project as in-depth as you'd like. Um, some of the things you can do, um, you could add buildings to your map and your street. Um, you can add signs. If you're someone who works with electrical, you can do lights. And you can also have the students create their own maps. Because I had a time constraint, I had just created a large class map and then the students work with that. But my plan for next year is have the students to create their own maps. Here's the sheet that I had students use. You, should, you can kind of scaffold this. If you have students who can work on their own and not need this sheet, of course you can have them do that. But if you need some students who need a little bit more guidance, um, I created this for them. So the lines is where they would put the coordinate plane. So you can say go north, then turn south, then go west, then turn north again, and then go east. So the, this is what I created for my group who needed just a little bit more guidance. And again, you can scaffold this <clears throat> for the needs of your group of kids. And here is the video of an example. Okay, so now I'm going to show you um, what my students did. This is the road that I created. Um, for the geography coordinate directions activity that we did with Sphero. Um, you can make your um, road as elaborate as you want. They can um, add buildings. If you're working with electrical, they can add lights. They can add signs. So there's a lot of different things that um, you can add to this project to make it more in depth if you would like. So I'm gonna show you um, just an example of what my students did, and I'm going to use the drive mode. <clears throat> my students had to code theirs, but I'm going to use the drive mode just for the demonstration. Um, I stated previously the students had to come up with cardinal directions to get from one place to another, so I'm just going to call out some cardinal directions and move my sphero. So before I start, I want to make sure my aim is facing me. Okay. I want to make sure my speed is at the very lowest. So let's say north is going to be pointing this way. So I'm going to say north. And then let's say I wanted my zero to go east. So I'm gonna go north and then go east. Let's say I wanted my zero to go south. And it can get difficult as you can see. Um, the your flooring might play a factor in how well your sphero rolls. Right now I'm on a carpet, so it's not rolling as perfect as I would like it to. But as you can see, my sphero went from one place to another using the cardinal directions. I stress that for my students a lot. You know, when you write your directions for your partner, make sure you're using the cardinal directions and make sure you let them know which way is north, east, south, and west, depending on where you're going to start in your on the street map so that's how I had my students do it and I had them coded if you want to do this like two times and just get them used to it I would have them do the drive mode and then code it just so they can get a feel of where to go how long to go and they start creating the code for it so this is what I did with my students to incorporate Sphero with geography for social studies
Okay, so this that concludes um, the online training of using Sphero through K5 curriculum. Um, just a couple of reminders as you are learning to use Sphero and trying to incorporate it into your classroom is just think outside the box. You know, we're in a generation of education where you can, you know, go the extra mile. And thinking outside that box can also help just engage your students in everything that you're doing. Um, also, think about your students. Um, if you have students who are good at programming and robotics, this is a great tool for them to use and also a great tool to introduce to kids who may not, you know, have that opportunity to have those things, you know, outside of the classroom. Um, differentiate when you need. Um, Sphero and all the activities that you can do can be moved to an advanced me to medium to beginning. So don't feel afraid that, you know, all your students are on the same level. It's just like with anything else. You differentiate and scaffold and make it work for each level of your students. And that's the great part about Sphero is that it works at different learning levels. Also, don't be afraid to fail. I've used Sphero a couple of times and my ideas haven't didn't come out how I thought they would. But, you know, you keep working and keep revamping it and... I promise you the outcome will be so amazing and also make it work for you you know not everything not all the activities you know will work for your classroom or even work for your specific class so you know take some of the things that they didn't have on the Sphero community or the ones that Sphero have made and make it your own so make it work for you and of course always 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 have fun you know k5 is the time to have fun with your kids and keep them interested in learning so just remember to have fun remember to think outside the box and i know your students will love it so thank you so much for watching the video and i hope you've learned some wonderful things and if you don't know what sphero is i'm glad i've introduced you to sphero so go get one and have fun